Hello, Pastor Tim here bringing you today's Kingdom Key. We're going to be focusing on the topic of forgiveness because forgiveness is actually a currency of the kingdom. Without forgiveness, we can't function within the kingdom of God. So let's go to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to be starting with verse number 9. Jesus is telling the disciples how to pray. And it's really interesting because before this, he says, look, don't use vain repetitions. Don't just heap up empty phrases. Don't just say stuff for the sake of saying it. Okay, so Jesus is saying, look, when you pray, we need to be strategic. And he starts off saying, pray then like this in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 6. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. As we have also forgiven those who are indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. From evil. Now, I want to break this down real quick before we move into the next couple of things. But number one, when we pray, we don't start from a point of need. We start with a point of relationship. And that's a big issue with a lot of people when they pray, is they pray and they just go right into the throne room and they're like, God, I need this, I need that, heal my mom, heal my dad, do this, do that. And Jesus told us not to pray that way. Jesus told us to start by addressing relationship, our Father who art in heaven. The second thing we do when we pray is we acknowledge his holiness. Hallowed is your name. So, Father, I recognize I have a relationship with you, and I'm your son, and I recognize that you're holy. And then it says, recognize his kingdom. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we don't just recognize his kingdom. We recognize that earth is actually participants in the kingdom of heaven when we have ambassadors. Paul called us ambassadors of Christ. We're ambassadors to the kingdom of God. And then it says, give us a snare of daily bread. So now we're starting to get to the point of requests. Lord, give us provision. Lord, help us to be able to provide for ourselves and our families and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then Jesus says something really critical here. He says, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. This is something you don't hear taught a lot. But unforgiveness is so poisonous and it's so dangerous because unforgiveness kind of works like a spider web. The more that we try to get loose from it, the more it entangles us. The more that we get caught up in it, the more we can't get free. And forgiveness just kind of wraps us up in a web to the point where we become bitter, we become angry, and a lot of times we find fault in other people and we find reasons for our unforgiveness. Well, they should have done this and they shouldn't have said that. Well, they treated me this way. And the fact is, forgiveness is your responsibility. It's not the person's responsibility to receive it. The fact of forgiveness being a kingdom currency means that we have to spend it. We have to give it out. Money in your pocket is no good unless you spend it. Money in someone else's hand is no good unless you're willing to receive it. So we also have to be willing to receive forgiveness. See, a lot of this is an issue of pride to where when someone says, I forgive you, and oh, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, you know what? If someone is extending forgiveness to you, then let's recognize that they're hurt. And let's recognize that even if our actions were unintentional, and even if we th didn't think anything we did was wrong, we say thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for wanting to be restored and reconciled into relationship and fellowship with me. And on the other token, other side of the same coin, is when someone has hurt us, when someone has offended us, when someone has said something wrong about us, or maybe it's even unintentional. You know what? A lot of times we're harnessing unforgiveness in our hearts, and it's over stuff that folks didn't even mean. Uh, maybe you misunderstood them. Maybe they didn't say it correctly. Now, there are a lot of times where the person is combative and angry and they're coming at you and they're saying bad things about you. And Satan will use that to poison your heart. And well, they don't deserve your forgiveness. 
Look at how they treated you. They need to first come and apologize. And see, forgiveness is not contingent on anything. There is nothing that merits me withholding forgiveness from another person. Whether they're sorry or not, we forgive them from our hearts. And, and you know what? Even if that opportunity to reconcile isn't uh, available, because forgiveness does not mean reconciliation. Reconciliation sometimes is a process, but forgiveness is a matter of the heart, and it's a singular action. Now, sometimes it has to happen over and over and over again, because your heart, your, your heart's tricky, and your heart can be hurt and wounded deep. So sometimes you forgive a person, and then that bitterness tries to creep back in, and you have to forgive them again. So forgiveness is a singular event, but it, it can also be a process, depending on the level of the wound, the level of the hurt. So... Folks, Jesus said it. If we withhold unforgiveness and we refuse to forgive somebody, then that is directly tied to how our Father will forgive us. So this is not something we can afford to just overlook. We can't afford to say, well, you know what, if they apologize, then maybe I'll forgive them or, or you know, or, oh, I forgive you. You know, like your kids, right? Your kids get in a fight. And then you say, okay, now go to your brother and say, you're sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll forgive you. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's silliness. It has to come from within you. It has to be sincere. And sometimes it can be very difficult because some people can be awful. But you know what's more awful than what people can be? Is being separated from the Father because we allowed our hearts to grow bitter and we refuse to extend forgiveness to others. Forgiveness requires a soft heart, and a soft heart really has to be developed. It has to be cultivated. And one way to have a soft heart is to really spend some time in the Word of God and say, God, you know, I want you to change my heart. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. I want to be like you. Lord, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Lord, create in me a pure heart. Renew a steadfast spirit in me. God, use me on this day to be an agent of forgiveness. And Lord, I release anyone that has hurt me. And see, that's why Jesus said, if, you're, if, if your brother has something against you, don't even give your gift at the altar. It's not because God is saying, oh, you unworthy thing, because we're all unworthy to a degree. But the thing is, we have to settle those matters in our hearts quickly before that root of bitterness has a chance to take hold of us and begin to harden our hearts. The condition of our hearts is the most important thing. That's why Psalm, our, uh, Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all things, for everything you are flows from it. So just think about that. Especially in light of the culture that we live, where we're so divided and we're so angry and we're political on this side and we're political on this side. And people are saying, you should have voted this way and you should have voted this way. And that can really make us angry toward each other. But you know what? If somebody criticized you because of the way you voted, if somebody hurt your feelings because of some political positions that you have, just extend that forgiveness. Just say, you know what, Lord, I release that person from the penalty of my anger and my retaliation. And maybe give them a call and say, hey, I just want you to know that, that I love you, I appreciate you, and I'm sorry that we have differences, and I forgive you, and I pray that you would extend that same forgiveness to me. So there's your kingdom key for the day. God bless you and keep you. Keep calm. Jesus on.